Hello lovely people, my name is Emma and today I'm bringing you my TBR for October. So this will probably be the last video that I film in this house, so I hope that you guys are going to see this on Sunday and then I will be taking a break and not posting anything on the Thursday and then the next video will be uh, a week from today, the following Sunday, in my new place. So very excited for that, just wanted to kind of let people know there will be a little break in there. So for October I am actually taking part in, um, I need to kind of keep track of what exactly, two two readathons, a book club book pick, a and two separate like big read-alongs rather than readathons about particular titles. So we've got a lot of different things going on. I'm going to kind of take them readathon by readathon, um, and uh, and then within that there are also just a couple of books that I'm interested in reading. Um, we're doing a mix of classics and spooky books this month. So the first readathon that I'm going to be taking part in is Victober. This is to read Victorian literature, and it takes place over the entire month of October, and it's hosted by Lucy the Reader, Katie from Books and Things and Kate Howe of which I will link all of their channels down below so for that there are some prompts but basically um, I'm slightly ignoring a lot of the prompts for the readathons that I'm taking part in and just going for the theming of whatever genre time period style etc etc that they're going for so I'm going to talk just about the books that I have for that the first one is a super cute little one and that is On Art and Life by John Ruskin. This is part of the Penguin Books Great Ideas range and I believe that this is actually an extract from John Ruskin's much bigger work or this was a published essay, I'm not quite too sure which. Uh, John Ruskin was a huge patron of the arts, especially in the Victorian era and he was very closely linked with the Pre-Raphaelites among many other artists but the Pre-Raphaelites are some a group of artists who I personally am very interested in and I've read about before so I know of Ruskin from those and kind of reading about him but I've never actually read any of Ruskin's work directly and I wanted to include a non-fiction that was kind of from the Victorian era in all of that. The next one that I'm going to try and get to is Little Women by Louise May Alcott. This has been on my uh, Classics TBR for the whole year and has been on a couple of different monthly readathon uh, TBRs even and I just haven't quite got there so I really need to start prioritising it. It is about four sisters and it's kind of quite a quaint story, sort of very character driven. A lot of people know about Little Women, it's very much like a children's kind of classic and also has had a movie come out recently about it so I don't think I need to say too much more here but I really do need to actually prioritise this one. And then the next book I'm going to be reading for Victoria is The Moonstone by Wilkie Collins. This is kind of um, one of the early examples of like the crime thriller genre I believe and I am intrigued by this one. I have it on audiobook and again Wilkie Collins as an author was on my classics TBR list so I'm going to prioritise this one which is slightly shorter and then I do also have The Woman in White on audiobook but I'm going to go for the shorter one to see if I like Wilkie Collins's writing style. Um, I think I've read one from them which was The Haunted Hotel that I didn't like. Um, I don't actually know anything about this one other than it's a mystery book and it's something to do with a curse connected to a diamond and I'm not actually that bothered about learning any more than that. I'm going to go in a little bit blind. Another audiobook that I plan to listen to for Victoria is uh, Two in the Tower by Thomas Hardy and I'm actually doing this, this is one of the read-alongs that's happening and this is the Stitch and Listen um, event as such that's happening in connection with Victoria that is hosted by Natalie from Curious Reader and Kate Tao who is one of the kind of main hosts of Victober and the idea is that you're going to join in by listening to the audiobook of the the Hardy book aforementioned and then also stitch or do some kind of craft. They did it last year focused on just knitting and I'm not really a big knitter but I do enjoy doing embroidery and this year they've kind of opened it up to more crafting in general so I will be sitting and doing an embroidery hoop and if I can work out a new filming setup in the new place that will work for it I might try and do like a little vlog of my progress stitching and listening to the book and kind of my reading experience. So if you'd like that, let me know in the comments down below um, and I will see if I can prioritize that. I don't know what I'll be stitching yet. I've got a few projects that I'm kind of finishing off but I'm gonna start something new for this and I'm very excited. So that is that one. And then the final book that I'm gonna be hopefully reading for Victober, but I'm planning on starting it actually before then is The Three Musketeers by Alexander Dumas. This is a French classic. So technically speaking, it's kind of pushing the boundaries of Victober, which I think is supposed to be focused on um, Victorian in British class like classics and writing of the time period but it was in the same like the the correct 
year window so and I really want to get to it again it's on my kind of yearly classics TBR and I'm very excited for it so I'm gonna start that one uh, in September of the next week or so and then finish it off early October so keen for this. Okay the next readathon that I'm going to be taking part in is also another month-long readathon as far as I'm aware and this is the Black Awena Thong and this is prioritising um, black authors who write in kind of genre fiction so not just spooky horror stuff there's kind of some historical fiction prompts and sci-fi and other sort of prompts connected with it. So this is hosted by Deirdre from Shade Tree Reads and Brie from Locked Booktition, I think is how you say her channel name. It's lots of letters sort of run together. Um, so yeah, this looks really exciting. It's for the whole month of October, again, as far as I'm aware. And like with Victober, I'm sort of ignoring the majority of the prompts. There's a whole bingo board, and I'm just basically reading the books I have on my shelf that I'm excited about that are genre-y and also by black authors. So that's my plan, and I think the spirit is still there. Um, first of all, I want to say there is a group book, and that is Gia Giovanni's Room by James Baldwin. James Baldwin is a very kind of iconic writer in the black literary canon who I've never read from before. He writes both fiction and non-fiction. I believe this is one of his fiction books that is focused on a gay romance um, and I'm very excited about it. I've heard only positive things about both James Baldwin as a writer but also specifically Giovanni's Room comes up quite often. James Baldwin was going to be on a classic TBR for next year I had planned but obviously this is a great excuse to jump in with his work and then assuming that it's like, like his writing style I'll prioritise reading more of him next year as well. So that is a group book that uh, I, my copy is coming in the post. I don't have it with me right now. Now let's talk about the other ones that I have. Uh, for a historical fiction I'm going to be reading Black Blood Blues, sorry that's Half Blood Blues, can't read today, by Essie Edigan. This is a historical fiction set in World War II and is about a jazz artist who gets in France who basically gets kind of uh, arrested, captured and then about kind of his story and then it's 50 years later the discovery of this story and the interactions that has with the person who's discovered it. it's kind of life. I really like historical fiction that has those two different timeline sort of vibes going on where the modern or more modern day one is finding out about the sort of historical one and I really enjoy World War II fiction so I'm excited about this one. This one's gonna be good. Then we have book two in the Rosewater series by uh, Tade Thompson. This is Insurrection. It's quite hard to read it actually with that font. This is a really cool, weird, funky sci-fi uh, set in Nigeria and the first book was about an alien dome that had sort of appeared or landed and then about um, the government's kind of interactions with it but it seemed to increase psychic abilities in people who sort of had a natural talent for it anyway. Book two I believe goes off on a slightly different slant and the dome is now gone and it's about um, or the dome is dying or something and it's kind of about trying to save it and I think it's following on one of the characters who was a secondary role in the first book and making them more of a main role so I'm intrigued to jump back in to this world I think it's gonna be good fun Recently I purchased White is for Witching by Helen Oyeyemi, which is a haunted house-esque style book with I think a lesbian love story undertone to it. Um, Helen Oyeyemi really specialises in writing weird stuff basically and I read her book Mr Fox a couple of years ago and did not get on with it at all but I've heard this is quite different I, I get the vibe that she's sort of a, a bit of a Marmite author you either like really viscerally love or hate the books that she writes so I'm not willing to give up on her and I'm really intrigued to try it again if this one doesn't land then maybe she's just not the writer for me but I think that she deserves another shot then I also have Everfair by Nisi Shul this is a alternative history steampunk-esque type thing and it is about the uh, colonization of the Congo by Belgium and it is a really reimagining of that if the Congo had um, access to more advanced steampunk technology. So um, it's kind of an imaginary utopia with then sort of this um, invading force. I think it's going to be playing around. I enjoy alternative history stuff. I know almost nothing about the Belgian invasion of the Congo so I think this will be a really good way of obviously expanding my world history knowledge in general and this has been on my TV for ages so I really want to get around to it. Also I really like the cover that is like just such steampunk glory to it so I feel like it really fulfills the role of that kind of very genre style writing and then the final one for this particular little kind of subcategory is Wild Seed by Octavia Butler which is the other read along that I'm taking part in there is a slow read along happening for all of Octavia Butler's work which is kind of taking on a book of hers every month or two months it started last month with Kindred or this month with Kindred 
but either way I've already read Kindred, I've not read Wild Seed. Wild Seed is the first in one of her series. She's a fantastic black author who writes a lot of sci-fi stuff, a lot of fantasy stuff. Kindred was like a time travel thing. Um, I don't really know a crazy amount about this one. I'm trying not to actually find out too much. I'm excited to just kind of approach her work in general and see how it goes. So I know Wild Seed is the first book. I'm probably gonna pick it up on Kindle because in November there is a new cover of it being released that looks stunning and will match up really nicely with the copy of Kindred I've got. So I'm gonna read it on Kindle and then I'm gonna buy the physical book to treat myself to finishing it, basically. Um, so that is that little grouping. And now we're gonna move on to uh, the the book club read that I'm doing and that is uh, for the Goth Lit book club which is hosted by Chapter Kate. I will link her chapter down below. Everything important will be linked down below um, as well as the Twitter for the book club itself. They pick a different gothic literature book each month. It started in August and it's kind of alternating modern and classic. This month's one is Dracula but I've already read Dracula and I don't really want to reread it so I kind of bounced on that one. But next month is The Haunting of Hill House by Shirley Jackson and that one looks really cool and I think it's going to work so well in conjunction to reading what is for witching because they are both um haunted house style books i've not really read anything in the haunted house genre not for years anyway so i'm intrigued by this and then i have three more books that i'm just kind of hoping to get to in general so there is a fairly distinctive lack of non-fiction on this list so given it is the spooky season halloween coming up i thought it'd be a good time to pick up uh, witches by tracy borman this is about james I and the english witch hunts and it's about kind of how the witch hunts specifically in england um became the the sort of moral panic um fever storm that they were i picked this up for my birthday maybe at the beginning of the year and i haven't got to it yet and i think it will be a great one for halloween and like i said i needed another non-fiction in here a little low on the ground for non-fiction very recently i forgot to include it in my latest book haul um i picked up the girl in red by christina henry this is a reimagining of red riding hood but it's set in a post-apocalyptic dystopian-esque kind of world where a um disease that affects your respiratory system has kind of trashed everything so a little close to home but I feel like we've now sunk into this pandemic enough that I can start going back to my kind of favorite subgenre of post-apocalyptic fiction and I enjoy Christina Henry I think she's fun light-hearted light -hearted is the wrong word but like fun fast-paced YA reimaginings of fairy tales I generally like what she does and I think this one's gonna be really really good and then the final one I'm gonna pick up is a cheeky graphic novel that we're chucking in there and that is Lock and Key volume 3 by Joe Hill and Gabrielle Rodriguez this is another haunted house thing three haunted house things in one go how exciting um it's it's like buses you read none of them and then you read all three of them at once uh, but this one is kind of um I'm probably gonna have to go back and, and sort of at least skim volume one and volume two because it's been a little while since I read them and I can't fully remember but it's something to do with a house that has all these mysterious keys to unlock doors and there's sort of weird hidden things behind them and then there's also something to do with a guy who uh, had a run in with the main character's dad when they were kids and now he's kind of back on the scene but there's some sort of time travel thing there and basically I can't really remember and I definitely need to go back and reread the uh the volume one and two but I think it's gonna be good fun and I like graphic novels and I've not been reading many of them so I think it'd be good to jump back in with some of the graphic novel series that I've got going on the go so there is a slightly rushed flustered verbally kind of tbr for you those are all the different things i have going on in october by the time we get to the beginning of october definitely going to be all moved in nice and comfy so i'll have back access to all of these books and everything um september's reading is going really really well i'm really enjoying not having a tbr and just kind of kicking it and reading whatever takes my fancy and i think that that's been very nice but i'm also really excited to do this sort of more focused reading and really try and tick off some of my yearly tbrs and join in with the ridiculous number of really cool readathons that are out there for october like october is peak re readathon time there are so many spooky ones it was really hard to pick the spooky one i wanted to do but i'm psyched for black Halloween, and i think it's gonna be great to get some of these really cool genre books i have on the go so that's it from me what are you reading for the month of october are you leaning into the spook or are you like actively avoiding it because you think it's overplayed do let me know in the comments down below and let me know if you've read any of the books and your thoughts on them have a wonderful reading week and I will see everybody in a week for I think the first break I've ever had on this channel. So, bye!